because deception starts small and gets bigger and so you know the little thing that you believe or you receive and you lodges in you then creates a platform for more and more and more you know if something came into you and said ah you know kill everybody you know it wouldn't be god because so because you because it would be too contradictory to who you are so the enemy doesn't usually come in and give you full-blown lies it twists the truth small little twistings of the truth so those prophetic people who are now i totally agree prophesying complete lies out of their own soul are being deceived because they received little deceptions and then those little deceptions began to build and build and build so they began to listen to the lies thinking it was the truth and therefore couldn't hear the truth because they hardened themselves to the truth because they were operating outside of love because you find they get more and more hard more and more political more and more judgmental more and more critical because that ultimately is the process of deception you know they wouldn't initially i mean like if you go back 10 15 20 years to well if you can go back further than that to bob jones and the kansas city prophets and all that stuff you know they didn't go from that point of people encountering heaven and experiencing angelic visitations of that to where they are now in one jump it was a slow slow decline by accepting certain things which became judgments which then open themselves up to believe more and more things and be more and more deceived into the politicization of it. You know, you wouldn't, you didn't get Bob Jones and that guy talking about, you know, the president being our savior. You know, they, he wouldn't, he wouldn't have even contemplated that. But over the years, they embrace little bits and little bits and little bits, and they come in a different spirit, but it affirms i think a lot of their eschatology the negative future of judgment that god is going to judge the world and we're going to get a tribulation and we're going to get this and this and this that opens the door for negative things to believe negative things could happen to prophesying judgment on the on america or judgment on people because they think that god is going to judge the world at the end of time that god is judging people all the way and that little bits then how that judgment takes place into becoming more and more violent and more and more you know california is going to fall into the sea and there's going to be huge earthquakes up in washington state and that's all going to fall into the sea and all this stuff you know that this stuff didn't just happen overnight it was a deceiving of the nature and character of god bit by bit by bit over the years which has brought them to this state right now and you know i think you know i don't know i you know i'm not i don't listen to them but occasionally when you see something on facebook or you see something come out and you realize yeah i can see where that's coming from you know and i i have you know mercy for them you know it's like they're deceived you know i'm not gonna pass judgment on them in a negative sense of I want the terrible things to happen to them. I want the opposite. I want them to experience the love of God that would bring about a revelation to see, actually, God didn't like this at all. And what we're being told God is like in this judgmental God and judgment God and God who's going to punish people and God's going to do this, he's not like that at all because actually he's revealed to me his mercy and grace and love. So, you know, I'm not going to come in the same spirit. You're going to come in the opposite spirit. But that being, if if that is just one being or that purpose, you know, maybe it's allegorical of, of what, what the enemy is doing per se throughout the Christian church, you know, has deceived people. It's like, you know, the story of, you know, if you put a frog in hot water, boiling water, it will come out. It will try and get out. It will desperately try and jump out. If you put a frog in cold water and you heat it up, little by little by little by little it will stay in that hot water until it's cooked because it's little increments of change that it doesn't have a huge 
oh, this is cold to hot. I need to get out of it. So the enemy is very clever. He deceives people little by little by little by little. And that is what the demise of the prophetic movement has been. Little by little by little. And there are certain things along the way that were signs that they were moving further and further away from the love of God. One would have been the excommunication of the vineyard all those years ago. Because why would did they do that? Because they that was starting point to this isn't this isn't our values and whatever and, and whatever. And that's usually well, that was exactly what John Wimber's values were. I went to the meetings where I was rolling around the floor and laughing and hysterically and you know once i was balancing on a cinema seat in my middle and my feet and my head were up in the air and i just couldn't i was you know rocking everywhere you know it, and but then all of a sudden no no this is wrong now you know and that that then becomes a infiltration into judgment of others and then eventually you find out that the same thing that happened to them they then started to judge others in in the bigger partners in harvest thing so they then made judgments to excommunicate people who believed in mystical stuff. You know, and that's that's the thing. It starts to replicate itself in future generations or because of judgment. You know, and ultimately, you know, little by little things change. And over the over the period of time, you realize that there is an infiltration which has people are but here think they're hearing from god and they're hearing from a totally different source but they think it's god they would have never listened to that source 30 years ago but they are listening now because there's been this eroding of who god is and everything and and becoming more aggressive spiritual warfare all of this, you know, you know, when I was in the 70s, whatever, they didn't have spiritual warfare. I mean, you were coming out of the Jesus movement, you know, in the 70s. It was like peace and love, man, you know. And then all of a sudden, you start maturing so suddenly. And, it, well, no, you're actually going from more and more away from the simplicity of peace and love. And now, all of a sudden, now you're coming out with these judgments and these sort of things that are happening because it moved more and more away from the simplicity and it became more complicated. And ultimately those prophetic people, you know, embraced us through spiritual warfare. We need to attack these things. We need to be a bite fighting and battling. And you've gone from, Oh, love, everything's love, wonderful love to we're on, we're at war. We're at war. Got to keep our armor on. We're at war. Look at all these things around us. Look at the atmosphere is all over us. We're at war. We're at war. We're going to do the you know, well, what won in the 70s? What won in the Jesus movement? Love. One war. It was love. But they went further and further away from love and they embraced law. So they embraced that warfare mentality, which then adopted the judgment mentality, which the prophets easily embraced, because now they're going God is going to judge everybody. So we're going to pronounce judgments. Because we're God's voice. You know, well, what was what, what Bob Love? John's talking about all the time, love. Yeah. So it sort of went away from love into, I think, through warfare, into this proclamation of judgments with a wrong view of God going to bring judgment on the earth and, you know, all the stuff, all the nonsense that's out there. And that certainly embraced the whole thing we saw in the uh, last election in the us and trump and all of that in which you know they were doubling down and adamant and all the stuff which is tied into the deep state and q and all that you know they were deceived you know to accept all of that stuff but it didn't happen overnight and we've got to be careful to measure everything against love so we don't get deceived, you know, because there's still that spiritual warfare stuff within the mystical movement, which says, well, go and cut off a dragon's head, you know, and do this and do that and do the other, you know, 
come in this aggressive stance rather than no come in the opposite spirit if someone is coming against you come against them with love come in the opposite spirit in fact you don't come against them at all you embrace them and you love them into change you're not going to try and threaten them into change or get them to change because you're making judgments against them restoration is god's desire so he's going to restore all things he's not going to separate all things and and in a sense you know in this scenario thinking that god's got this mission to come against this thing actually is is actually just going to replicate it what what you have to do is see if that being is a fallen being then restore it to what it's originally doing and they wouldn't do that anymore but if you try and stop it fight against it all you're doing is giving it an opportunity to fight you know i'm not going to fight against anything because if i give it an opportunity to fight it will fight against me so i'm not going to fight it so what am i going to do come in the opposite spirit look to see that being restored and i'm sure that would have probably had a revelatory purpose originally which was to reveal the true nature of god which is now deceiving people into a false nature of god you know and therefore what was its original purpose how has it been twisted and let's help restore it so then you're not looking to fight against something you're looking to restore that being so that it doesn't do what it's doing now but does its original purpose even in even in the whole thing of well god's given me this mission to deal with this and come against it if they're not dealing with it in a restoration sense they're just going to perpetuate it in another way because they're going to fight against it and then it will react to that fight and you'll find that people will start saying things against that person because they will be deceived and they'll start judging that person and there'll be prophetic stuff coming against that person because they're fighting and then you're in a battle whereas i'm not going to fight against something and giving an opportunity to fight against me when I, all i'll look to do is remind it who it is and remind it that god has forgiven it and remind it that it's got a higher purpose and a, a restored purpose into its original purpose which is so much better than what it's doing right now you know and if you come in that spirit you can begin to break down the barriers that are put up by we're going to fight this thing because it doesn't mind being fought against because you're eventually creating tension you're creating conflict you're creating negative environments by fighting against something that god wants to restore so i yes get the revelation that there may well be something in the prophetic movement which is absolutely deceiving them and maybe a counterfeit to the holy spirit but what was its original purpose and if we can help discover what that is and bring it back to that think of think of all the good the prophetic movement could be doing if they weren't deceived and they had a revelation of love because inherently they want to do good they're just deceived in thinking that they are doing good when actually they're causing a lot of damage and a lot of harm to a lot of people yeah i think what god does often there's a revelation of something that you begin to embrace but you you embrace it out of your own understanding and you try and sort of put it into a how does this work functionally and so you try and help it function now do i believe in government absolutely do i believe in foundational government absolutely would i function that way in the same way as i did it before no i wouldn't because a it would become more of a relational thing and i would help people discover that government is part of their sonship identity not something they have a job to do or a role to do in will elect you onto the government of 12 or the bench of 12 or the bench of this or the bench of that but actually it is all of our identity to be sons of god who establishes god's kingdom and government in our lives and through our lives and actually that might be towards a blueprint that god has given for a group of people that they foundationally can help that people come into that blueprint and discover the government of that blueprint that everyone's responsible for 
But I understand that certain people within a blueprint may have certain predisposition to certain areas of authority or ministry or whatever. And by giving them opportunity of expressing themselves, you give that opportunity for that government to be released. Now, I'm not saying that it's wrong necessarily to have some idea of what that government might be. But if you find it's more organic and more relational, you'll find that it's working anyway, because you're releasing people to be themselves rather than bringing them into this position. And then you try and get them to fulfill the role or job description for this position. Actually, the, their identity makes room for them. And then government is an expression of their identity and the room that's made for that to function works. And ultimately, you don't want to try and make someone fit into something that they're not, but help them to be who they are. And if everyone is who they are, then everything will be at work in a governmental way, authority through love. But it became organizational. You know, and that organizational is more, well, who can we get to fill this role? Rather than who is actually already expressing that fulfillment that we can recognize and honor for who they are. So definitely, I think initially when things happen, often they become sort of a parody of themselves. You know I mean? <laughs> and and it's like the principles are right the outworking of the principles became something we did in an organizational structural way rather than allowing it organically to develop and realizing it in how people function within a group of people in you know in in a relational way so I think government operates but it doesn't have to operate in the structural organizational way that initially we made it and often god does that he allows you know like the ketuba and all that stuff he allows you to engage something so that you can see well this isn't actually it but actually this is showing something different towards it you know and when you're talking about government you're talking about roles you know initially people sort of want to have some handle on it because they can't find it in a relational way but ultimately, God takes you through the through the journey of doing to becoming to being. Um, and that was our journey. You know, if I knew what I know now, then I wouldn't have taken us on that journey that way. You know, but I didn't. So it was part of our rites of passage, if you like, um, that you go through things to get to somewhere else to then be who you are. Thank you for watching our YouTube channel. We really appreciate you taking the time. If you enjoy these videos, would you please take a moment to like, comment and subscribe? It really does help. Thank you very much.